Okay, welcome back to our next video in our video series on medical terminology. In this video, we'll discuss chapter number six, the skeletal and muscular systems. Uh, first off, the learning objectives for this chapter. Uh, define and spell the word parts used to uh, create medical terms for the skeletal and muscular systems. Uh, break down and define common medical terms used for symptoms, diseases, disorders, procedures, treatments, and devices associated with skeletal and muscular systems. Build medical terms for word parts associated with the skeletal and muscular systems. And lastly, pronounce and spell common medical terms associated with the skeletal and muscular systems. Our first we'll start off with some uh, anatomy and physiology, some word parts for both of these systems. Uh, the first two uh, reference the same thing. Arthro and articulo are reference to joints. So we think of arthritis, you have you know, an inflammation of the joints and an articulation is another term for a joint, you know, a place where two bones meet. The next one, bursa, is a reference to the bursa, which is a sac of fluid as found near joints. Carp or carpo is a reference to the wrist, and more particularly the, the bones of the wrist. And the last one on here, uh, chondro, is a reference to cartilage. See the next one, uh, condyle, is a reference to a rounded mass or a rounded uh, protuberance on the end of some uh, long bones usually where they meet another bone to form a joint. Cost or costo is a reference to uh, a rib. Cranio is a reference to the skull. Fascio is a reference to the uh, fascia or the fascia, which is a type of uh, supporting connective tissue. Uh, femoro is a reference to the, uh, the femur or the thigh region, the large bone of your upper leg, that's the femur. Fibro is a reference to uh, fiber of some kind. Fibulo is a reference to the fibula, which is a bone in your lower leg, one of the two bones of your lower leg. Ilio is a reference to the ilium, which is one of the bones that make up the uh, the pelvis. And it goes along with the last term on here, uh, ischio, as a reference to the ischium, which is another bone that makes up the uh, the pelvis. Menisco is a reference to the meniscus, and a meniscus is a thin band of cartilage that's found uh, in between two bones, uh, like in between the bones of the knee, for example. Musculo is a reference to the uh, muscles. Same thing with uh, myo or myoso is also a reference to muscle. And last one here, uh, myelo, is a reference to the uh, either the bone marrow or the spinal cord. The next one, uh, ortho, is a reference to uh, straight. Osteo is a reference to bone. So an osteocyte would be a bone cell. Uh, Prioto is a reference to a wall of the body. Uh, patello is a reference to the patella, which is the technical name for your kneecap. Pedo is a reference to both a child and also your feet. And last one on here, uh, petro, is a reference to stone. A phalango, these are references to the phalanges, which are another, which is another term for the, your, your digits, so your fingers and your toes. Fizz, or physo, is a reference to uh, air or gas. Pube, or uh, pubo, is a reference to the pubis, which is the, the front bone of your pelvis, the pubic bone. And the last one on here, radii or radio, is a reference to x-rays, or uh, radioactivity, or the radius, which is a bone in your forearm. The next one, uh, sacro, is a reference to the sacrum, where you'll find your tailbone. Uh, skeleto, is a reference to the skeleton in general. Spondyl, is a reference to the uh, vertebrae in the backbone. And stern, or sterno, is a reference to the sternum, or your breastbone. Synovo, or synovio, is a reference to the uh, synovial membrane, which is a membrane that will produce a uh, synovial fluid that will help to lubricate space between the joints, or between the bones of a joint. Tars, or tarso, is a reference to the tarsus, which is your ankle bone. Uh, teno or tendino, versus the tendons. And vertebro is a reference to the uh, vertebrae. All right, now we we'll talk about more details of the skeletal and muscular systems. Now, sometimes you'll see these covered individually as just the skeletal system or just the muscular system. And sometimes you will see them combined together. So that's when you get the musculoskeletal system. And these have to work hand in hand in order to support the body and to produce uh, body movement. Your muscles have to attach to something so your body is able to move. Your muscles have to be attached to your skeleton. And it's like any other body system, these are subject to injury and inherited disorders as well as many kinds of diseases. Alright, we're talking about the anatomy of the musculoskeletal system. Of course, for the uh, the muscle part of that combination, you'll have you know, uh, muscles, then you also have uh, tendons and ligaments. Those are two separate things. They are not the same uh, structure. And for the skeletal uh, portion of this combination, obviously that will include the bones. Here's a, a common example of a long bone. 
a bone that is longer than it is wide. This will actually be the bone of your upper arm, the humerus. And bones will come in uh, various types of types of shapes and sizes. But your shoulder would be up here. And then you have the uh, the ends of the, of the long bones are called the epiphysis. So you have an epiphysis here. You have the shaft, the long bone, the diaphysis. The other end of the long bone. Then you have the hollow chamber in the middle, where you'll find the bone marrow, and where the uh, where blood cells are created. Here's a anterior view of a skeleton. There are 206 bones of the skeleton, and obviously not all of them are listed here or named here. But of course, some some easy landmarks. Of course, the skull, the sternum, uh, thoracic cage, the rib cage, the collarbones, upper arm, humerus, the two bones, of the forearm, pelvis, a femur, the main bone of the thigh. There are two bones in the lower leg, then all the ones in the feet. Is an anterior view of some of the major muscles found in the body. There are over 640 muscles in the body. And so it would be really difficult to find one image that has even half of those you know, identified. There are some common ones. You know, the major muscles of you know, the head and neck, the chest, the pectoralis major and minor, of the arm, the biceps, brachii, the main muscle that you flex, muscles of the leg, the quadriceps, muscles of the lower leg, of the calf, for example. All right, next we'll talk about some pathophysiology terms when it comes to these two systems. The first one, orthopedics. This is a medical specialty that deals with the, the functional impairment of the skeletal system. And someone who practices in this field of medicine is an orthopedist. All right, now we'll talk about some uh, signs and symptoms, some word parts that go along with this, or these two body systems. Uh, the first one, A, is a reference to uh, without. Brady means uh, slow. Dis means difficult or, or painful. Then hyper means uh, in excess of or higher than normal. Arthro. Arthro is a reference to a joint. Kinesio is a reference to movement. Myo is a reference to muscle. Tax or taxo is a reference to a coordination. Ten or teno is a reference to uh, a tendon. And last one on here, troph or trofo is a reference to uh, either development or nourishment. All right, some suffixes. You know, the ending of uh, the vowel A is a reference to uh, one in Latin terms. So an example we've talked about before, a, a vertebra would mean one bone of uh, your backbone, one vertebra. If you have more than one, it'd be vertebrae. It would end in A-E. The ending algia is a reference to pain. Dinia is also a reference uh, to pain. The suffix I-A, a general condition. And then the ending with the letter Y, it also means a process or a condition. All right, now we'll talk about some signs and symptoms of the skeletal and muscular systems. The first one, arthralgia, is a technical term for a pain in the joint. The next one, ataxia, is where you have a, a loss of control over your body movements, a total loss of control usually. The next one, atrophy, if we're to break this word down, A means without, troph, trofo means nourishment or development, then Y, a process of. So atrophy is the process of having no development. This is when muscles will waste away when they aren't being used. Next one, bradykinesia. This is another word for uh, having slow movements. It's something that you'll often see described with a patient who has uh, Parkinson's disease, for example. It's your body's inability to uh, adjust the body's position because it moves so slowly it can't adjust properly. And the last one on here, uh, decalcification, is where bones will lose uh, calcium, which will make them weaker. So you are removing the calcium portion of the bone. The next one, dyskinesia, is a uh, an impairment of normal voluntary movements. Uh, dystrophy is a uh, disorder where an organ or a tissue will waste away due to the uh, impaired nourishment of that tissue or of that organ. An example of this would be muscular dystrophy. The muscles are starved from uh, nourishment, so they will basically just waste away. The hypertrophy, this is an enlargement of an organ or of a tissue due to a, an increase in size. The myalgia is where you have a pain uh, in a muscle or in a group of muscles. And last one on here, tenodynia, is a reference to pain in the tendons. This term isn't used as often uh, as it used to be. More commonly used term now is uh, tenalgia. They both reference pain in the tendons.
All right, some other word parts when it comes to uh, diseases and disorders. Prefix A, again, means uh, without or lacking. The epi means uh, above. Uh, para means uh, nearby or alongside. Poly means uh, many. And quadri means four. See some uh, larger uh, word parts. Ankylo, that's a reference to uh, being stiff. Arthro is a reference to joints. Burso is a reference to the bursa. Carcino is a reference to uh, being cancerous or cancer in general. And last term on here, uh, carpo is a reference to the carpals, which are the bones of the wrist. Chondro is a reference to cartilage. Uh, condylo is a reference to a condyle, a rounded projection at the end of a bone. Fibro is a reference to fibers. Uh, Kypho is a reference to having a humpback. And Luco is a reference to white. Litho is a reference to uh, stone. Lord or Lordo is a reference to having a sway back curve where the, your, your lower back curves inward more than it should. The opposite of having a humpback. Uh, menisco is a reference to the uh, meniscus. Myo is a reference to muscle. Milo is a reference to the uh, spinal cord or also the uh, bone marrow. The myos or myoso is a reference to uh, muscle. Osteo is a reference to bone. The poro is a reference to an opening or a, a passageway of some kind. Sarco was a reference to flesh, not to confuse this with a sacro, which is a reference to the sacrum. A scolio is a reference to uh, being bent or being crooked. Think of scoliosis as the spinal column will curve instead of being straight. And last one here, uh, spondylo is a reference to the backbone or the vertebrae in the backbone. Synovio, reference to the synovial fluid or synovial membrane. Tendino is a reference to tendons. Algia is a reference to pain. Asthenia is a reference to the, or having a lack of strength. The suffix seal is a reference to having a hernia. And then the ending emia is a reference to uh, being of the blood or a, or a blood condition. Genesis is the formation of or the creation of. Itis means the inflammation of. Malaysia means the softening of. Oma is a reference to a, a tumor. And osis is a reference to an abnormal condition. Uh, the first one here, uh, plasia, is a reference to uh, formation or development. Plesia is a reference to paralysis. And the last one on here, ptosis, is a reference to drooping or sagging or even uh, protruding. All right, now I'll talk about some uh, specific diseases and disorders of the skeletal and muscular systems. Uh, the first one, achondroplasia. If you were to break that word down, the prefix A means without. Chondro is a reference to cartilage and plasia is a reference to formation. So we put all those together without the formation of cartilage. This is a condition that will lead to someone having very short stature. This is actually a type of dwarfism. The second one, ankylosis. This is a condition of having abnormal uh, stiffness or the inability to, uh, to move a joint due to the bones uh, fusing incorrectly. Now here's an image of someone who has a chondroplasia. Due to the lack of cartilage, the limbs will be uh, much uh, shorter than they should be. So the result is a form of dwarfism. The next one, arthritis. It's a general term that, in that covers uh, inflammation of the joints, which will lead to pain and lead to stiffness. Usually it will get worse as we get older. There's more than one kind. Uh, the first one, OA, osteoarthritis. This will involve the uh, wear and tear uh, damage uh, to the joints. As we get older and as the protective layers of cartilage on the end of the joints will slowly wear down just due to normal wear and tear. So that inflammation of those joints is due to this normal use and that leads to osteoarthritis. The second one listed RA, rheumatoid arthritis, is an autoimmune condition. This is where your own immune system will attack uh, the lining of your joints and those attacks lead to the uh, inflammation and the uh, disfiguring of the joints, especially in the hands. See, the last one here, inflammation. This is where you have a, a particular part of the body becoming uh, swollen or hot or red or painful. This is caused by a, an injury or uh, an infection. All right, this image, we have someone uh, suffering from osteoarthritis. The joints of the fingers have become uh, swollen. You can tell by just looking at the image that they would probably be painful. In right, this image, we have the regression of uh, rheumatoid arthritis. You get the attack of the synovial membrane here. That membrane being attacked will cause it to become inflamed. 
and swollen. Then we'll start to wear away this cartilage here on the ends of the bones. Then we have that loss of membrane. You have the loss of the synovial fluid, which is the lubricant between the between these bones, which will lead to a very stiff, very uh, a painful joint. And then it gets to a point where the joint is completely deformed and unable uh, to move. So you have a, com a complete loss of the joint itself. Arthrochondritis is the inflammation of a particular type of cartilage called articular cartilage. And this type of cartilage is found on the ends of joints that will help form a joint between bones. And articulation is another word for a joint. The next one, bunion. This is a, a painful swelling found on the foot, usually on the, uh, the first joint of the big toe. Bursitis is the inflammation of the bursa, which are uh, small fluid-filled sacs uh, between bones, usually in uh, the knee is a good example. And they're there to help cushion the bones and the tendons and the muscles around that joint. So bursitis is usually common in the knees or in the shoulder or in the elbow or in the hip. Uh, bursa lith is where you have a stone that forms within the bursa. Now, lith is a reference to stone. See the last one on here, uh, CTS, carpal tunnel syndrome. This is a condition that has uh, chronic pain and numbness and tingling uh, in the hands, usually in the last three fingers. It's caused by repetitive uh, action, such as typing on the keyboard. The position that the hands and the wrist are placed in put pressure on the uh, median nerve, and that constant pressure will lead to the tingling and the numbness. That's why you'll see uh, many keyboards are now ergonomic, so they're, they're basically broken in half, so your wrists aren't bent as your hands are on the keyboard to type. So with an ergonomic keyboard, your hands are able to be placed straight onto the keyboard itself, causing no bending, no pressure on the median nerve. The next one, uh, carpoptosis. This is also known as wrist drop. This is where you have a paralysis of the muscles that are used to extend the wrist and the fingers. So if those muscles aren't able to work, then they can't extend the wrist or extend the fingers. That's why this is called wrist drop. Uh, next one, cramps. If we have a involuntary contraction of a muscle, usually it's quite painful, caused by a fatigue or a strain. Uh, next one, DJD, uh, degenerative joint disease. And like the name implies, this is where you have a joint that is degenerating or breaking down, or the condition of having a joint break down over time. This term is a synonym for osteoarthritis, wearing down of a joint over time. And the last one on here, uh, DMD, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. This is a very severe form of muscular dis muscular dystrophy, uh, more commonly found in boys than in girls, and this is caused by a genetic defect. This will cause uh, progressive weakness and also the loss of muscle mass over time. See, so going back to the first word, if you to break that down, uh, carpo refers to the wrist, and ptosis means drooping. So this is where you get the wrist drop of phrase for this condition. See, so next term, epicondylitis. This is a condition where you have a painful inflammation of uh, the tendons that are around an epicondyle. An epicondyle is a, a feature on a bone. A, a condyle is a rounded projection. So the epicondyle will be the area just above that. And some common versions of epicondylitis are tennis elbow and a golfer's elbow. So the next one on here, uh, fibromyalgia syndrome. This is a chronic disorder that's indicated by uh, fatigue, uh, pain within the muscles, uh, being very tender at particular spots uh, throughout the body. You can also have uh, memory issues or mood issues. It's something that's very often misdiagnosed because it can present as so many other different things. The next one, fracture. This is a generic term that references a cracking or a breaking of a bone. And there are multiple different kinds of fractures depending on how the bone is broken. The first one, a colis fracture. This is the kind of fracture that you get if you were to fall and your arm was extended and you hit your wrist. This usually takes place at the the, the, the distal end of the radius, or the, the far end of the radius. And of course this will result in a broken wrist. Is that going on here? Uh, comminuted is where the, bro where the bone breaks into uh, two or more pieces. So this kind of break would take you know, a good amount of force to shatter a bone uh, in that way. Let's see the next one on here, uh, compression fractures. This is found in uh, the bones of the spine they become weakened or they start to crumble. So they are compressed onto uh, the bone next to them. And the last one on here, displaced fracture. This is where you get the bone breaking so the pieces of the bone are not aligned correctly. See, next one, epiphyseal fracture. 
This is a fracture at the epiphyseal plate of the bone. This is the area of the bone where you actually get active growth at the epiphyseal plate. This is typically more common in uh, children. As we get older, the epiphyseal plate will get smaller and smaller. And when we reach our uh, late teens or early 20s, the epiphyseal plate actually uh, becomes fully ossified. It turns completely into bone. Because when we have active growth, it is actually a band of cartilage. See, next one, green stick fracture. It's a type of uh, fracture that's typically found in children. Where you have one side of the bone that's broken, but the other side of the bone is not. It's only bent. So it looked like a a small a branch of a tree. If you were to bend a small branch of a tree, part of it will com completely break through, but the other part will just bend you know, in half. And again, this is usually found in children uh, under 10 years old. The next one, a non-displaced. And this kind of fracture, you'll have a, a break in the bone, but the ends are still aligned correctly. The next kind, a POTS fracture. This is a reference to a, a fracture of the ankle where you get a fracture in some of the parts of the bone that stick outward, some of the prominences that stick outward. When you look at your ankle, the part that kind of just outward on the inside of your ankle, or the part that sticks outward on the outside of your ankle. Because they jut out, they're a little bit more prone to being uh, injured or fractured. So when those are fractured, that's called a POTS fracture. And this usually happens whenever you roll your ankle. And the last one on here, a spiral fracture, also known as a torsion uh, fracture. This usually happens when your body is rotating, but one limb is planted and not moving. So your body is causing your limb that is not moving to be to be twisted. So you're having uh, torque or torsion applied to the, say, the ankle that's not moving, for example. All right, here are examples of some common bone fractures. The first one, a transverse fracture, where it goes all the way across. That's the oblique fracture, where it goes in a diagonal direction. Oblique is always a reference to diagonal. Spiral fracture, you can tell the, the torsion or the torque is placed on this bone, causing it to turn itself around, and as it's, as the body spins around, it, it causes the bone to break like this. A comminuted fracture, several pieces that are produced as the bone breaks. Uh, this one, a pathological fracture caused by a bone disease or by a tumor. It looks a little bit different than the rest of these because the bone is rotted away from the inside, which will lead it to becoming more easily fractured. A green stick fracture. You see how it's broken here, but only bent right there. Uh, this one we didn't talk about, a uh, buckle fracture. But it's another one that's more common in children, where you literally have the part of a bone buckling. And this is often you know, pretty common in children because their bones are, are softer. This is another term for an incomplete fracture, this buckle fracture. And a compression fracture, the bones in the vertebrae are breaking down, so the bones on top will cause it to be crushed. It is compressed. The next one, gout. This is a condition where you have very high levels of uric acid and when uric acid is not removed uh, properly, it will form small crystals and these crystals will uh, lead to arthritis, especially in the bones of the, of the feet. The second one on here, a herniated disc. This is found in between the, uh, the vertebrae of the spinal column. In between each vertebrae, there is a, a cushioning, a, a basically a shock absorber layer of cartilage and then whenever these discs become injured or weakened the outer part will tear open and then the rest of the, of the disc will herniate or stick out through that weakened opening and this can lead to the vertebrae uh, pressing on the vertebrae next to it which will cause pain or even on the spinal cord or some nearby nerves and causing pain it's also known as a slipped disc uh, this image we have an example of gout the high levels of uric acid will form crystals in the joints of the feet, usually in small bones of the feet. You'll see it obviously building up here. On this image, we have a example of a herniated disc. See here you have this disc that should be shaped just like this side, becoming uh, compressed because it is weakened. That will lead to pain and even potentially the loss of movement, depending on how bad the herniation is. Uh, these next three all deal with the uh, curvatures of the spine or abnormal curvatures of the spine. The first one, uh, kyphosis, is also known as uh, hunchback, where your upper part of your back is curving more anteriorly or more toward the front than it should. See, the opposite of that, lordosis, is often called swayback, where your lower part of your back curves more anteriorly than it should. And the last one, scoliosis, is where you have a lateral curvature of the spine. 
that we are curving from to the left or to the right. And here are examples of all three of these. Uh, the first one, kyphosis or humpback. This upper part here is curving more this way. So you have a, a hunchback appearance. Lordosis or swayback. The lower back is going more inward and forcing the belly out. So it's a swayback. And then scoliosis, a lateral curvature of the spine. This should not be anywhere near this far to the right or to the left. This should be just straight. See, next one, Marfan's syndrome. This is a condition that is caused by a genetic disorder that affects the connective tissue of the body. Now, because the connective tissue is so widespread throughout the body, and there's such a variety of connective tissue, there are multiple types of symptoms. People who have Marfan's tend to be very tall and very slender. Their arms and legs are going to be disproportionately long. Uh, their fingers will be also disproportionately long. The sternum, the breastbone, will protrude outward or will dip inward. They'll be very extremely nearsighted. So these are just some of the many possible symptoms that you'll find with Marfan's. Meniscitis is the inflammation of the meniscus. And the meniscus is a small piece of cartilage that is found uh, between the bones of the lower leg and then your femur, your upper thigh bone. It's very common to tear these during a sports injury. Myasthenia gravis. This is an autoimmune condition. It's a chronic uh, neuromuscular uh, disorder that can lead to a, a varying degree of uh, muscle fatigue and muscle weakness. Some common uh, symptoms here would include uh, drooping of the eyes, a weakness of the muscles of the eye in general, an impaired uh, ability to walk. And last one on here, myeloma. Now this is a, a malignant tumor of the bone marrow. Myocele. Is where you have a, a herniation of a muscle through its outer sheath. Myositis is where you have a degeneration and a inflammation of muscle tissue. Osteitis is where you have a degeneration and inflammation of, of the bone. And last one on here, osteitis uh, deformans. This is a chronic bone condition that leads to uh, very large bones. And these bones will be deformed because there's a an excess uh, amount of growth. And as these bones will grow, there's going to be an ex excessive amount of uh, tearing those bones down and regrowth. This amount of activity will lead to bones that become too large and uh, deformed. And it also will result in bone pain and arthritis and also lead to fractures. All right, our next term, osteosarcoma, is a name for a cancer found in the bone, more commonly found in uh, young adults and children. The next term, osteogenesis imperfecta. This is a, a genetic disorder where the bones are incredibly brittle. Often when children are born with this, they're called children of glass because even the slightest movement can cause bones to break. So if you break down this word, you are literally having the imperfect uh, formation of bones. Something as simple as uh, coughing or sneezing can easily break uh, multiple ribs. See, so osteomalacia, to break down this word. Osteo, of course, means bone. Malacia means uh, the softening. So osteomalacia is the softening of the bone. And last term on here, osteomyelitis, is a inflammation of uh, the bone or the bone marrow itself. The osteoporosis is a condition where the bones become uh, less dense. This is much more common in women who are postmenopausal. Paraplegia is the paralysis of the legs and the lower body due to some injury or disease of the spinal cord. Quadriplegia is paralysis in all four extremities. The so quad means four having paralysis of both arms and both legs. Polyomyositis is a chronic inflammation of many muscles all at the same time. And the result of this would be a muscle weakness. And this is an autoimmune condition. And the last one on here, rickets. This is a disease that's most commonly found in children and it's caused by a lack of vitamin D. And what happens is vitamin D is a key factor in the bone becoming very strong. So if that factor isn't there, the bones are very easy to bend and bow in this image, we have an example of osteoporosis. For the image here in letter A, this is how a section of this kind of bone would look, or this type of bone is called spongy bone. With someone who has osteoporosis, these gaps between these bony plates get larger and larger, so they look like this. So the strength will get less and less. This is why it's very easy for someone who's older to break a hip, because the strength just isn't there anymore. This also helps to explain why, as people get older, we start to shrink in height. Now, we aren't literally becoming shorter, but what happens is the strength of the bones is getting less and less, so it can't support the weight of the body, or your body will start to hunch over because it can't stand up straight anymore because the strength just isn't there internally. All right, a rotator cuff injury. Uh, the rotator cuff is a basically a capsule 
of fused tendons that help support the arm at the shoulder joint. You know, in reality, your arm is basically this kind, of, this kind of hanging there off of your shoulder. It's not that stable of a joint. So this is why it's very easy to injure the shoulder. Uh, spinal cord injuries, of course, anytime there's any kind of trauma or injury to the spinal cord, this can be uh, very, very serious. You know, this could be something as serious as uh, causing paralysis or can even be fatal, depending on how severe the, the trauma is. Spondyl arthritis is a, a spinal disorder where you have one of the uh, vertebra in the spinal column uh, slip forward and actually land on the next bone below it. Of course, this will lead to uh, back pain, numbness, weakness in one or even both legs. So it's really the forward displacement of a vertebra. And this usually happens in the lower back area, the lumbar area of the vertebrae. The next two often go together because people tend to misuse these terms. Uh, sprain and strain. Of course, they are related, but they are not the same thing at all. The first one, sprain. This is the uh, stretching or tearing of ligaments. A common place for this would be you know, your ankle. And a strain is the stretching or tearing of a muscle or a tendon. So they're both involving a stretching or tearing, but what is being torn, what's being stretched is the difference. So you sprain ligaments. You strain muscles or tendons. All right, this illustration, we have, we have various degrees of sprains in the first, second, third degree. Of course, the higher the number, the more severe the injury is. For first degree sprain, localized joint pain, tenderness, is really not that big a deal. For second degree sprain, there's a, a detectable joint laxity, which means a feeling of looseness. Of course, uh, localized pain and tenderness. For third degree sprain, there is a, a complete disruption of the ligaments. So it's incredibly loose and very, very unstable. See the next one, TMJ, temporomandibular joint disease. This is a very common disease. It affects the joint right where the jaw meets the temporal bone. So that's where the name comes from. Uh, temporo is the, the temple bone. Mandibular is referenced to the mandible, which is your lower part of your jaw. So where they meet. So whenever there is pain in this joint or if the movement of that joint becomes compromised, that is a, a symptom of TMJ. Uh, tendonitis is an inflammation of a tendon. And the last one on here, tendosynovitis, is the inflammation of a tendon where it actually connects to a bone. And a tendon is what will connect muscle to a bone, and more specifically, it is the inflammation of the synovium, which is the, the fluid-filled sheath that surrounds a tendon. All right, now we we'll talk about uh, treatments, procedures, and devices in various work parts. Many of these we've already talked about uh, in this chapter. Arthro, it refers to joint. Uh, Burso, it refers to the bursa. Uh, chondro, it refers to cartilage. Uh, costo, it refers to the ribs. Cranio, it refers to the skull. The electro, it refers to uh, electricity. Fascio, it refers to the, uh, the fascia, you know, the connective tissue. Lamina is a reference to the uh, lamina, and the lamina is a, another term for a, a thin plate. Myo is a reference to muscle. Ortho is a reference to straight. Osteo is a reference to bone. Uh, spondyl, spondylo is a reference to the uh, vertebrae. Sin or sino means uh, together or with. Teno is a reference to a tendon, and vertebro is a reference to the vertebrae. Uh, centesis, this is a withdrawing of a fluid, such as when a woman is pregnant, she may have amniocentesis, the withdrawal of the amniotic fluid. Clasia or clasis, both of those mean uh, to break. The suffix uh, thesis means uh, to tie together or to bind together. Ectomy, uh, the surgical removal of. And the last one on here, the suffix gram is a record, the actual results of a test. Be careful not to confuse that with a graph. So if the word ends in gram, that's the actual results of the testing. Uh, graphy is the process of uh, recording. The iatry is reference to uh, treatment or physician. Ending ist is a specialist. A cardiologist is someone who specializes in studying of the heart. Lysis means the destruction or the breakdown or separation. The suffix pathy is a reference to disease. Plasty is the surgical repair of. So a rhinoplasty is the surgical repair of the nose or a nose job. The suffix raffi is another word for suture. Scope is an instrument used for viewing, like a microscope is used, or an endoscope is used for viewing. The scopy is the visual examination. So during an endoscopy, you would use an endoscope, the actual instrument. The suffix tick means pertaining to, and then the suffix uh, tomi is the process of cutting. All right, next term, arthrocentesis. This is the removal of excess fluid uh, from a synovial cavity. This is used to help diagnose gout or septic arthritis. The second term on here, arthroclasia. This is the breaking up the adhesions that are found in a ankylosis. So when there, whenever there's an abnormal uh, stiffening or immobility of a joint, that is ankylosis. Uh, breaking up the adhesions that are making this joint abnormal, that process is called arthroclasia. All right, in this illustration, we have an example of arthrocentesis using a syringe to uh, withdraw fluid of the synovial cavity. And this example 
is being used to treat carpal tunnel syndrome. And this will eliminate the excess fluid in the synovial cavity, which will lessen the pressure on the median nerve. Next term, arthrodesis. This is the immobilization of a joint through a surgical means. If you were to break down this term, arthro that means joint, and desis is the surgical fixation. So this term literally breaks down into the surgical fixation of a joint. You can see this as an artificial ankylosis. And a good example of this would be uh, the fusion of a vertebrae in the back, for example. The next one, arthrogram. This is a, a series of images uh, focused on a joint after the uh, injection of some particular type of dye. This is what's used in nuclear medicine or for an MRI, for example. And the last one here, arthrolysis. This is a process of restoring the mobility of a joint that was previously stiff. And this image is an example of an arthrogram. You have an x-ray of the lower back and the pelvis. And the portion that's in red right here is showing the inflammation of the intervertebral disc, the disc between the two vertebrae. Our next one, arthroplasty, is a surgical reconstruction or the uh, replacement of a joint. Remember, plasty means the surgical repair of, arthro means joint. Next term, arthroscopy, is a uh, procedure uh, for diagnosing and treating uh, joint problems. So this is a, a process of viewing uh, the joints, and the tool that you would use during this procedure would be an arthroscope, the actual device to use for viewing. And the last term on here, arthrotomy. This is cutting into a joint, either to reconstruct a joint or repair a joint or to a drain a fluid. The generic cutting into of a joint is called orthrotomy. This illustration, we have an example of arthroscopic surgery. And here we have the, a knee joint that's being uh, examined or being repaired. So this whole procedure would be arthroscopy. And the tool used here in the surgeon's hands would be an arthroscope. A bursectomy, the surgical removal of a bursa. A chiropractic is a, a medical specialty that deals with using the hands to manipulate the muscles and the spine. And someone who practices in this field will be a chiropractor. And last term on here, uh, chondrectomy, is the removal of cartilage. Now, ectomy is always the surgical removal of. Chondro is reference to cartilage. Excision or removal of cartilage. A chondroplasty, the surgical repair of cartilage. Costectomy is a surgical removal of a rib. Cranioplasty, surgical repair of the skull. And craniotomy is a surgical opening into the skull. Disectomy is the surgical removal of intervertebral disc, the disc between the vertebrae and the spinal column. See, a spinal fusion. This is a procedure where vertebrae are fused together to permanently join them together. The next term, uh, spondylosynthesis, is a surgical fusion of those intervertebral discs. Okay, this term is uh, synonymous with uh, spinal fusion, the correction of an unstable part of the spine by fusing it together with another bone. And the last term on here, laminectomy, the surgical removal of one or more of the vertebrae. And this is done to uh, give access to the, uh, the spinal cord or to relieve pressure on the cord or some of the nerves. Uh, next term, EMG, electromyography. This is a process of recording the electrical activity of muscles, usually to gauge uh, its strength or its lack of strength. And next term, uh, fasciotomy. This is a procedure where the, uh, the fascia is cut in order to relieve pressure or tension. This is usually done to ease the pressure that's on uh, blood vessels and uh, circulation to a limb. And going back, going back to the first term, EMG, we break it down. Electro means electricity. Myo means muscle. And graphy is a recording process. So it's not the actual results of the test. It's the overall process of recording the electrical activity of the muscle. All right, the next term, a fracture reduction. This is just a technical way to explain the uh, procedure to restore a fracture to its normal, correct alignment. And fractures can either be closed or open. If a fracture is closed, that means uh, the bones uh, do not break through the skin. And if a fracture is an open fracture, then the bones do break through the skin. So you're exposing the internal environment to the external environment, which will raise the potential for uh, infections in addition to the broken bone. And there are many ways to reduce a fracture. First one listed here, internal fixation. This is when something is inserted internally to help stabilize that fracture or to help it heal, such as a, a wire or a screw or a, a pin or a metal plate. Something is put internally to help the, uh, the fracture heal. Now, external fixation, this would be something that is used external to the body, such as a, a cast or a splint. So depending on how severe the break is and where the break is will determine what type of equipment that you need. Do you just need a cast, or do you need something more uh, internal, something more invasive? Uh, bone grafting. This is where you take healthy bone and use that to replace the bone that has been fractured 
were damaged during a fracture. So it's the same uh, basic concept as a skin graft. You're taking a piece of healthy tissue to replace severely damaged or missing tissue somewhere else. But instead of involving skin, you're involving bone. And the last term on here, uh, electrical bone simulation. This is a process where you're using electricity to help stimulate or induce bone growth. And this can be used to help with the overall healing process. The quicker the bone gets rebuilt and replaced, the sooner the healing process will be complete. The uh, next term, uh, myoplasty, the surgical repair of muscle. Again, myo always means muscle. Uh, plasty means surgical repair of. Our right, next term, myography. This is a suture within a muscle. And last term on here, uh, the NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. These are uh, very common pain relievers. There's some common examples, aspirin, ibuprofen, uh, Aleve. All of those are non-steroidal drugs, and they're also anti-inflammatory drugs. So those are common examples of NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Okay, orthotics, this is a field of medicine that will deal with uh, using specialized mechanical devices to help treat or to help support uh, abnormal joints or limbs, such as a, a splint or a brace or an insert in, that goes into the shoe that will help, help a person deal with a, a problem with their arch. And the uh, professional that deals with orthotics is the orthotist. And last time on here, uh, prosthesis. This is an artificial body part, such as a, a foot or a leg or an arm. Any artificial body part, so not just a limb, it could be an artificial heart or a, a breast implant, all those are considered to be uh, prostheses because they are artificial to the body. All right, next term, ostectomy. This is the surgical removal of bone. This could be a, it's a small piece of a bone or an entire bone. The next term, osteoclasis, is the surgical destruction of a bone. Sometimes bone have to be uh, broken in order for it to heal correctly. And the last term on here, osteopathy. This is a field of medicine that deals with uh, diseases of the bone. Uh, next term, osteoplasty, uh, surgical repair of bone. Uh, podiatry is a field of medicine that deals with uh, the feet in any conditions that may uh, affect them. And someone who practices podiatry is a podiatrist. Uh, next term on here, RICE, R-I-C-E. This is a method of treatment that is widely used for any number of uh, conditions, but this is an acronym. Uh, R-I-C-E stands for rest, ice, compression, and elevation. So if you're injured, of course, rest is always good. Uh, icing the injury, uh, compressing injury, like with a, an ace bandage, for example, then elevating that injury above the level of the heart. And last term on here, tendomyoplasty. The surgical repair of a tendon and muscle. So it's not just myoplasty, it's tendomyoplasty. It's tendon and muscle being repaired. So if you break that down, tendo means tendon, myo means muscle, plasty is surgical repair. So it's not just a repair of the muscle, not just a repair of the tendon, it is both tendon and muscle. So next term, uh, tenorophy, this is a suture within a tendon. Uh, next term, uh, tenotomy, this is uh, cutting into a tendon. And last term on here, uh, vertebroplasty, a surgical repair of a vertebrae. All right, now we'll go over some uh, common definitions that you'll see with the uh, muscular system and the skeletal system. See the first one, ACL, the anterior cruciate ligament, a ligament found in the knee when it gets uh, very commonly torn or ruptured in uh, sports injuries. Next one, CTS, carpal tunnel syndrome. Next one, DJD, as an overall generic term that references degenerative joint disease. DMD, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, a very severe form of muscular dystrophy. DO, this is the, the recognition of a doctor of osteopathic medicine. An MD would be a medical doctor, but someone who goes through osteopathic medical training is a DO instead. They're still doctors. They're still addressed as doctors. They just went through a different type of training. Last one, EMG, electromyography, the process of recording the electrical activity of muscles. HNP is a reference to a herniated disc. It formally references the herniated nucleus pulposus. The NSAIDs, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Like aspirin, like ibuprofen, like Aleve. The next one, OA, is for osteoarthritis. The RA stands for rheumatoid arthritis. RICE, method of treatment, of rest, ice, compression, and elevation. Uh, next one, ROM, it stands for range of motion. So when you are describing uh, someone's injury, you want to be able to describe how well they are able to uh, move that limb. 
the less the range of motion is, the more severe the injury usually is. The next one, uh, SCI, it stands for spinal cord injury. The next one, THR, it stands for total hip replacement. And last one on here, TKA, total knee orthroplasty, so a surgical repair of the knee. Uh, TKR, total knee replacement, so not just repairing the knee, but replacing everything there. A TMJ, temporal mandibular joint. And the vertebrae, because there are so many vertebrae, they're usually referenced by just general region of where they're found. First group of vertebrae on top of the neck are the cervical vertebrae. There are seven of those. So they're called C1 through C7. So C1 would be the first cervical vertebrae. The next group after those are the thoracic vertebrae. There are 12 of those. So they're numbered uh, T1 through T12. And the last group in your lower back are the lumbar vertebrae. And there are five of those. And they're indicated by L1 through L5. All right, we'll end our video with our uh, combining form quiz. Uh, the terms on the left, uh, costo, ortho, arthro, kypho, scolio. They'll match up with either uh, straight, curved, rib, hump, or joint. So the first one, costo, is a reference to rib. Ortho, a reference to straight. Arthro, a reference to joint. Kypho, a reference to hump. And scolio, a reference to curve. Here are all the terms with their correct definitions. All right, and that brings us to the end of chapter number six on the skeletal and muscular systems. We will continue our video series on medical terminology with our next video on chapter number seven.